Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of the Movie Crusaders. My name is Sean Wasserkrug. With me today is my Weekend Crusader co-star, Brian Michaels. The reason why he's here instead of on the Weekend Crusaders is because we were reviewing his most anticipated film of 2021, and that is In the Heights. Uh, Brian, I believe, wasn't this your number one most anticipated last year before COVID? Uh, I believe so. I mean, I have to go back and check the list, but if it, if it wasn't my number one, it was definitely up near the top. I, re- I remember... Uh, was I think it was 2019 we you and I were discussing what our anticipated films were and you brought this film up I'm like I have no idea what the hell this movie is <laughs> because there hadn't been any trailers or anything yet you're like oh it's Lin-Manuel Miranda's you know first Broadway show and all this kind of stuff it's it's I'm so excited it's great I'm like yay but <laughs> then I saw Hamilton and I was like oh shit this is gonna be really good <laughs> maybe Maybe it's going to be really good. And then the first trailer came out, and I actually got kind of excited for it. You've been just like at a 10 for this movie uh, pretty much the entire time. So naturally, I had to have you on the show uh, to talk about it. Because, yes, you could have my normal review, guys. But this is the guy who loves these kind of films. Like, I'm cool with musicals. Brian loves musicals, especially if it's like, you know, these kind um, and he's been, he's, I think you've already watched this twice now. Is that what you said? I did. Cause I, I, the first time I saw it, I wanted to go make sure to go see it on the big screen. So I went and saw it in the theater, went to IMAX, everything. And then, uh, but I wanted to watch it again, especially cause I want to, you know, cement some thoughts about before we talked here. And so I'm like, you know, I'm gonna watch it again, but I watched it home on HBO max. Although I'm sure I'll still <laughs> watch it home again, but I'll probably go back and watch it at least one more time in theaters before it goes to. Yeah, I, I watched this on HBO Max because I didn't feel like getting pelted by popcorn or candy or whatever, like the last time I was at the movie theater. Um, that, it, it was in 4K. I don't have an IMAX theater near me, so I figured this picture's quality is going to be probably better than what I see in the theater. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's one of those things where uh, normally when we do our reviews together, it's going to be a big spoiler review and we're talking for like an hour, hour and 20. Guys, we're not going to do that this time. Um I think Brian and I both were kind of in agreement before we did this review that we're going to try our best not to do any spoiler talks about it. We're going to talk about the film. We're going to talk about the performances. We might bring up some song titles and stuff, but we're going to leave out the big plot points and stuff out of this review. So if you guys are worried about us spoiling stuff, we're not going to do any spoiling. This is going to be a regular straight-up review, which is going to be very hard. I don't think Brian's ever done a straight-up review without spoilers on the show before. (laughs) Uh, But we're going to definitely try it out. Um, Initially, like I said, because this is Brian's, I'm going to let Brian take the lead on this. Um, so, Brian, what are your general thoughts of In the Heights? And then we'll kind of dig a little bit deeper into it. So I, I had, I think, probably heard the title In the Heights, but had never seen the show or anything before before Hamilton. Um, so after, of course, Lin-Manuel Miranda became huge with Hamilton, um, you know, people started talking about some of his other works. And, and it came up that they were going to make a movie of his – because people wanted a movie of Hamilton, which wasn't going to happen, at least not anytime soon. That would never. I don't think that would ever work. Well, this and then, but this is before they also decided to put the Broadway show on on Disney Plus or whatever. Too. No, I'm talking about after seeing the Broadway show. I don't know how. I'm yeah, I, I'm not sure if they will or not. But but at the, but at the time, people were excited because like, well, they're not going to do that, but they are making In the Heights his first show into into a movie. So you know, I I tracked down. I listened to the soundtrack. Um, I, I didn't listen. I didn't like listen to a lot, so I didn't like have it memorized or anything. But I really liked the music I heard to it. And, and it's very much in the same vein as Hamilton. Um, and I had seen like some YouTube clips of performances and stuff from the original Broadway show, but I'd still never seen the entire show before I went and saw this movie. Um, yeah, I went and saw this movie. Uh, it was my most anticipated of this year and last year, I double checked, um, of which is mostly the same list because nothing came out last year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it did not disappoint. I, I, I loved this movie from beginning to end. I mean, from the very first uh, number, um, all the way till till the end, you know. I'm smiling, you know, ear to ear. I'm I'm grooving in my seat, you know. I'm enjoying the music. I'm enjoying it. Um, I would I would have killed to have seen Brian like doing like the Brendan Fraser from Blast in the Past. Yeah, Brian. Brian, I will say this before we started. Brian's like, we're gonna sing this whole review, right? And we're going, no, that is not Sean to do that. Lin Manuel, Lin Manuel Miranda, you know, rapping, singing thing. Just talk really, really fast with a beat and it goes like this. And I like, yeah, no, that would, that would not work. I would stop like after like 30 seconds. I like hearing you try them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this, this is a movie. It's, it's, it's full of life. It's full of energy. You can feel the passion for it. Um, it's the, the music is amazing. Uh, the colors and the cinematography are great. This is the one thing I think about this. There are musicals that they make into movies, which are just kind of like, okay, here's your musical movie. 
And then there's ones like this, which really embraced what a movie can do differently. Um, they took they took what could be you know they could have just filmed the stage performance or something like that. But the, some of the things they did with the, especially the cinematography and the choreography of a lot of the numbers, like especially like things like in the pool and things like that, um, that just really took advantage of of the, the medium of movies and made it even and kind of heightened it even more with the, you know the colors and cinematography and stuff it was amazing. Um, you can really feel the culture in this, the the, the dancing, the singing. I, I really enjoyed both the singing and the dancing. They have so many different styles. I mean, it's all kind of got that Latin flavor to it. But even within that, there's like, you know, everything from break dancing to salsa dancing. It's like, you know, everything in between modern to to really old styles of dance. The singing goes everything from like what almost sounds like, you know, kind of a hardcore rap all the way to just pure melodic singing. Um, and so they, they managed to meld all this together into one package that, like I said, did not disappoint me at all. Um, I'm glad I went and saw it on the big screen for the first time just because, like I said, I could fully experience it. I want to see it again that way. Um, did it need to be IMAX? Probably not. I mean, if your theater, I, I would still say if your theater has uh, good sized screens, you probably don't need to splurge decks for IMAX, but I would try to see it on a big screen first, just because it's, it, it is quite experience. It's worth it. Yeah, I mean, for me, obviously seeing Hamilton really kind of helped me be more excited to see this because I mean, I mean, I saw the trailers, but I was just like, okay, it's about a neighborhood and they're all a bunch of dreamers. Like that's the gist of what I got from the trailers. But obviously I saw, you know, Lin-Manuel Miranda's in this, he's got a small role in this. Uh, is it Anthony Ramos? Ramos, yeah. Yeah, Anthony Ramos, you know, which before Hamilton, I mean, before we saw the, the live action version of Hamilton on Disney Plus, I only knew him as the the, the gay best friend of Lady Gaga. Star is born, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Star is born. That's all, that's all I knew him from. So now I know I'm like, oh, it's Hamilton. Okay, cool. He plays, uh, God, what's, what was his character's name? I mean, I know he plays um, Hamilton's son, but what was, what was his character's name in Hamilton, uh, the first half of the, the first act? Oh, I honestly don't remember. I'm such a bad funny. Hamilton fan. I mean, they're all funny, but I'm blanking on it. But he, he really stood out to me because I was like, his, his – his uh, strong vocals, you know, all that kind of stuff. So when I saw that he was actually going to take the lead of this film, I was like, all right, cool. I want to, I, cause I remember him from a star is born. And I liked him in Hamilton. I was like, I really want to see what he does with this. Um, going into I the it was so smart too, because it's like, you know, obviously he played kind of Hamilton's son and stuff in that. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously Lin-Manuel Miranda has kind of aged out of being able to play the role in the yeah. movie. So yeah. I thought that using him in the role, I thought was just a perfect, perfect transition. It was, it was, it was a very, very smart move because one, I think also because I think they know the Hamilton people are going to mm -hmm. keep an eye on this, bringing the Hamilton stuff. Because I mean, there are Hamilton Easter eggs in this film. If you guys oh, yeah. have seen Hamilton, there are at least four or five Hamilton Easter eggs. The first one I heard was the hold music. I'm like, why do I know this song? <laughs> I, know this song. I, was like, I was like, oh, I know this song. And I got really excited. And then there's there's the uh, the ice cream man. Um, well, you know. he he was in in heights he was the original one who played the role that Corey hawkins plays his best friend oh yeah 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 i, I did look that up afterwards i did yeah so he was the, actually the, the only person who's in this movie who plays the same role they played um, in the broadway one was abuela yeah, yeah. Abuela. otherwise there are, there are there are several other people also who are who are in it like they, they play like cameos or other small roles although i will say that the mr softy um christopher jackson i i feel like they wasted him it's like they it's did, like they if did. you're gonna have this guy from Hamilton that, who obviously can sing and can perform and stuff, let him sing a line of something. Yeah, let him have a little back and forth between him and Lin Manuel just to have it. But it's like it's one of those guys like it's not their movie. It's not. It was more like a, a tip of the hat kind of thing, which I was like. I, I will say though, uh, stick around for post credits. Oh, I totally. You didn't. I didn't. Oh, you didn't tell me. <laughs> Well, I thought people just, I thought people, now these people just always stuck around in case. Are we talking about, well, yeah, but if I'm in the theater, I do, but at home, I just shut off yeah. and go to the next thing. Are we, talking mid are we talking mid credit or all the way in? Okay. So I got to check that out now. Uh, but yes, apparently, thanks, Brian. Check, stay all the way to the end credit scenes. Um, but yes, so going into this, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll leave it open, you know, because I of who it's doing. So we get the first initial song number, which is. In the heights. I mean, they literally, that's the first thing. And it's about a good, what, like five, five to 10 minute number. And it's, yeah. I mean, it, it, like that, it, that gets you set and ready to go for the rest of this film. Like, it is fantastic. Uh, and everything that, that Brian has already said, the choreography 
is fantastic in this film, especially the uh, one song. Um, obviously, I don't have the song's uh, names memorized, but the song with um, Corey Hawkins and uh, who plays Nina? Uh, Leslie Grace. That one with the, uh, when they're on the, the fire escape. The building? Yes. Oh, that's called When the Sun Goes Down. Okay. That, beautifully choreographed. Gorgeous. $96,000. Um, the whole pool scene. Fantastic. The uh, was a carnival mo song at the end. Carnival Fantastic. Um, there's just so many awesome moments in this film, and the like, like you said, the, the visuals, the, the cinematography, the colors. The I'm not gonna say what the scene is, but the in the subway. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's that one moment where they all line up, and the lights it's and the trailers. Yeah. Is it in the trailers? Okay, because like, I'm getting so much more or less trying not to watch trailers anymore because – except for like well, – well, they, they put out the first eight minutes of this movie, which was basically the whole yeah. opening number which, yeah, which on, is nice. online, and I was like, I am not watching this. I waited. I oh, managed I to avoid it until I went to the I didn't watch it either, but it, it's it's one of those things because, I mean, it's going to be like Army of the Dead where it's like, here's the first 15 minutes. Like, well, that's the best part of the movie. <laughs> but um, visually, this 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 uh, whole movie is, is stunning. The vocals, everyone kills it in this. Uh, if there, I guess, if there was a weak voice, it was probably Jimmy Smith, but he doesn't sing nearly enough for it to be like a detrimental thing. Oh yeah, and I, and I didn't think he. I mean, he actually had a good, good singing voice. I mean, he's he didn't. Fine. He's fine. I, he didn't get um, to sing nearly as much as everybody else, but I thought he fit the role well. You know who yeah. totally surprised me, and I don't know why. I had no idea Corey Hawkins could sing. I was, I was literally just saying, like the one person that stood out for me was Corey Hawkins. Like, yes, he played Dr. Dre and. Um, straight out of Compton, but see, I know him from that and The Walking Dead, and then the one season of Twenty Kong School Island. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's fantastic in this as Benny. His first introduction song, where you ain't got no skills, loved that. Loved oh yeah, that and the opening, song. and then like the very next song is is Benny's Dispatch, which I thought he did great. Yes, he, he was he's actually movie. probably my favorite character in the movie. I mean, Anthony Ramos and everybody, I loved pretty much the whole cast. But yeah. Corey Hawkins is the one who I'm like, I, he was just the most fun and I liked his he was the one I, I kept wanting them to go back to. Yeah. And I, I, I want to see what Corey Hawkins is doing. And that's nothing against Anthony Ramos's uh, uh, Yuznavi, which I, when you find out how he found out, I laughed out loud. I was like, I was like that's brilliant. Yuznavi. Yuznavi. But yeah, I, I loved Anthony Ramos in this film. I think this movie is going to elevate him to top, uh, one of the top tier actors out there. Uh, I think... Um, Vanessa, uh, uh, Melissa Barrera. Mm -hmm. I've never seen her in anything. I thought she was fantastic. Her singing voice is superb. She looked so familiar to me the whole movie. I was sure I'd seen her somewhere else. I'm like, where have I seen this oh, girl? I, I read that the whole time. I, I couldn't, I couldn't. I and couldn't. I looked her up and she's done, no, I mean, she's done like telenovelas and, you know, things yeah. like that. But now I've seen her. And then I, I figured out later on is she just, her face just looks familiar. Her facial expressions, mm -hmm. it, it this is going to be weird. It's like a weird combination of Kristen Ritter and, um, oh, I don't remember her last name. Geraldine. I see, I see where you're going. From Broken Hearts Gallery. Geraldine Vizwana. Oh, Ger yeah, Geraldine. For, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Her, her eyes, especially in her facial expressions, that's what it was reminding me of. I, I don't <laughs> I don't disagree with that. Yeah. I, I really don't. But she is fantastic mm -hmm. in this film. Um, her singing voice is superb. Yeah. Uh, her dancing amazing as well the person who surprised me the where like yes Corey hawkins i was like but i knew Corey hawkins was in this this person i did not know was in the movie and when they popped up i'm like oh my god that's that's this person and then i was like oh wow she, she's great in this is um uh stephanie uh beatriz who plays uh carla she's from brooklyn 99 and in brooklyn 99 she's like this hard ass she's got a dark like a deep voice and stuff like that and you see her in this I'm like Oh my God, I've never seen Stephanie like this before. She's great in this. The cast is fantastic. I mean, I was I was wondering if I was going to like Sonny, played by uh, Gregory Diaz IV. By the end of the film, I loved his character. Uh, Nina. I mean, all these characters are fantastic. And then, of course, um, uh, I'm blanking out. Uh, uh, Abula. Olga. Uh, is it Meredith? Meredith? Uh, Meredith. Meredith. Who, who played a... a, a um, who played a, a, it's Abdullah? Yeah, Abdullah. Abdullah. Abdullah is a pro wrestler. Abdullah. Abuela basically means grandmother. Yeah. Abuela. She is clearly the heart and soul of this film. Um, her her journey that we get with her, I mean, I mean, she's, yes, she's the grandmother or she's the mother of the heights in this film. 
Um, and the journey we go with her on and, and just the story that she, the way she affects everyone in this little neighborhood is incredibly well done. Uh, I had a blast watching this movie and this is probably one of the first films, uh, outside of like a cartoon or anything like that. There's not a single dickhead or asshole in this entire film. No the closest one's thing you have no is a jerk in this film. The closest thing you have is the guy who's charging too much for dry cleaning. It's like it's that's the closest and thing you have to a villain in this movie. He's, he's, just, he's just a guy. And even he's, he's not really a villain. He doesn't yeah. do anything evil or mean and the entire he's respectful yeah. to everyone. There's not a single jerk, which it's New York, so it's like that's not really accurate. But well, maybe, no, that's no, Washington, maybe that's why Washington Heights is special. There's no jerks there. there there's, there's not a single mean person. Unless you get white Mr. Softy. He's apparently kind of a jerk. But he, man, he, all he's doing is just grinning at Lin Manuel, like I'm getting the moon. And again, he's just trying to do his job. Exactly, he's doing his job. He's not doing. He's not being an asshole. But there's not a single mean person here. Like, this you know who the is, asshole is is Lin Manuel Miranda because, like, after the, when he really, walked back, he yeah. squirts the syrup all over that girl's ice cream cone. I'm like, he, he just ruined the ice cream cone. He totally does. <laughs> <laughs> the girl's like, just like, what the hell? Actually, no. There are already jerks. It was the little kids that, were, that he was telling the story to, like the boys. They were like, shut the hell up, let him tell the story. But no, it's like it's it's just such a feel good movie. I mean, it's it's bright, it's colorful. The songs are catchy. Did I have to listen to it with subtitles on? Yes, I really did because it's it's very very quick, like Hamilton is. Um, and there were times where I was like, if I didn't have the subtitles, I may not have caught what they were saying. Now, obviously, watching it on repeat and stuff like that, I'll start to know the lyrics and everything. But at least for the first time through, I was like, I'm having a hard time hearing it, but I can see what they're saying from the subtitles. You know, the, like, and like I said, the culture is is fantastic in here. The way they interwoven um, uh, Spanish with, with uh, English into the songs works really well. Uh, yeah, I really don't have anything real negative to say about this film. To me... It's as of right now, hands down, the best film of 2021. Oh yeah, um, it, it just shot. I mean, I obviously was already going to probably be just because there has not been a lot for half of this year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is number one. But even if, even if everything that's supposed to come out the rest of this year comes out, this it's still going to be top ten. Virtually no chance this comes out of my top five, even unless there's some unless something super surprises me and sneaks in there that I don't know about. Yeah, this is potentially a lock, kind of like how the, the the Twelve Bloods was for me last year around. This time, actually, more like April. I knew that that film was not moving out of my top five. Mm -hmm. This is probably not moving out of my top five for the rest of the year. Uh, yeah, I I really enjoyed this film. The songs, I I'm probably gonna get the soundtrack now because I liked a lot of the songs. Um, I definitely am gonna watch this again. Um, like I, said, I I watched it last night, so I haven't got to watch it a second time like you did. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed the hell out of it. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that I that I liked it. Um, cause I needed something to make me feel good. This was, it's been a rough couple weeks for me, especially with work and everything. I needed a feel good moment. I needed a feel good movie and in the Heights. And that's really what this movie really does. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I'm actually, cause I never know what to think about you at musicals. I, I don't know if you're usually it's, a musical fan or not. It's, 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 it comes and goes. There's, there's like, like the one thing I was worried about when this movie first started, I was like, Oh God, are they going to sing the entire time? Is there not going to be any talking? Because like Les Mis, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't stand that. Everything, everything was sung. I was like, I need mm -hmm. at least a little dialogue. Yeah, I mean, this, this is, I mean, this movie is wall to wall music. Is, Don't get us I wrong. Say, I would say this is about ninety three percent singing, yeah. seven percent talking. But that talking was a nice little breather in between, and then it just set it up for the singing, which I thought worked fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like, I love Sweeney Todd. I love Hairspray. I um, singing in the rain, American in Paris. Um, I love certain musicals. Sound of Music. I, I. Uh, tried to push off watching for the longest time and I actually ended up enjoying it. Um, but then there were others like uh, how to succeed in, in business without really trying. And I'm, I'm okay with Moulin Rouge. I don't love it. I don't hate it. And then of course, Les Mis, I, I wasn't a huge fan of. So music, is, musicals is kind of like, I want to like it, but it's, I, I'm probably a little more harsher on it. Kind of like I am with horror films. It's like, Horror films, they just they do them just to do them, and I think they need to be better than just doing it out of laziness. And musicals are kind of the same way. Um, so yeah, I would go into this like I want to like it, but I just have no idea if I'm going to. And I loved this film. I'm hoping what I'm hoping is that this isn't going to have the the La La Land effect, which I don't think it will. Whereas the first time I saw La La Land, I loved it, and then every time I watched it thereafter, I liked it less and less and less. 
I don't well, see that happening. On second viewing, I was afraid, like, you know, I, they might be like, okay, I'm going to skip through these songs like that. Yeah. And there's definitely, there's things I like more and things I like less. Like, I mean, I, 96,000 is one of my favorite songs. Um, although, I thought, one thing I thought, is a little tangent, in 96,000, one thing I loved they did, which I'm surprised they didn't do it the rest of the movie or even the whole song, was the little animations. Oh, you're talking about when they're walking down the street? When the four guys are walking down the street, yeah. they're doing like the weird, the weird animation, which I won't go into the specifics of them, just because I don't want to spoil anything. But but they do like this weird little animations while they're singing. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of clever. But they don't even do it for that whole song. It's like just one moment in the entire movie. They do, they do little fantastical things throughout. Like there's the, the first time Vanessa sings about her journey. At the very end of it, you have a run down the street, and they're doing like the ribbon things in the sky. And then there's, and then there, of course, there's the the sun song. Well, that that's the, the, sun, the sun song. I actually, while it was beautiful, the, the, well, the dancing, the choreography, the music, the song itself, and even the filming of it was beautiful. I thought that it seemed out of place because it's the was only it because, song. Was it because the kid noticed them on the window. It's like so. So this is really actually so like. Wait, are they really doing this? No. <laughs> Because literally right before that, I was like, I was like, this is clearly not happening, but it's a beautiful kind of like they're in the moment of their uh -huh. minds kind of thing. And then you see the little kid going, like, wait. Well, that's, that's just it. It's the only number in the entire movie where they do something that that's Full really that fantastic, fantastic. Where people are actually doing something fantastic. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this seems, it, I didn't dislike the song, but I thought, okay, this seems out of place with the rest of the movie a little it's bit. It's just so good. But then when they show the kid, I'm like, okay, now you've really thrown me off. Yeah, but it's so, it's shot so well. Well, that well, if you want to talk about un unbelievable, at the very, very beginning, when Anthony Ramos spins the manhole cover with ease, with that thing's like three oh, yeah. it's it's that, so, uh, That's not fuck this movie. That, so but, yeah, but, but, yeah, I mean, those couple of my favorite songs, and um, the other song I I just want to mention that I really loved was uh, Blackout, which is the one the Powerless and Fireworks. That yeah, whole section there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a great. I thought song. that was really good. Um, the only other one song I kind of wasn't really in love with, and I'm probably gonna get so much shit for it was. Uh, which was Abula's song. I, 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 it's a very so, important, it's a very important song. I get the message that's happened under it. It could have been just because of the the subway, but I just wasn't feeling it, and I wasn't really into it. Like I knew what it meant. I knew the path we were about ready to go down when she was singing the song. But that was the one song where I was like, "Man, this song's going on forever." So. So uh, first of all, there's one other positive I wanted to mention when you're going through the cast. The one that didn't get mentioned was um, what's the character's name? Uh, the one who owns the salon, um, Daniela. Um, that's Daphne Ruben Daphne Vega, who Vega. she was the original Mimi, which is Rosario Dawson's role in Rent. She was the original Mimi on Broadway. I also, I also want to, I also, um, oh, fuck, where's her name? Uh, so like, it's the three girls. It's it's her, Stephanie. What are you talking about? Yeah, oh, she's she's an orange. Dasha Polanco from Orange Is the New Black. Yeah. yeah. I, I liked her a lot. In this, she's, yeah. so, she's so much fun. Well, all the all the girls in the salon, I really enjoyed. Now, now, the one you were talking about from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I've seen two episodes of Brooklyn Nine-Nine in my life, and I don't remember them. You, She's so... It, that so I had no idea who this was. And my daughter, I went and saw this with my daughter because she's really into Hamilton and musicals and stuff. And she, at the end, she's like, oh, it had that girl from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I'm like, which one? And she's like, that, that girl, Carla. And I'm like... I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, she plays um um uh she plays uh Rosa Rosa De Rosa Diaz. She uh, she's like the king hard ass mm -hmm. on Brooklyn Nine Nine. So she plays everything like she can't have feelings and, and all this. And seeing her in this was like a whole like different experience, and I loved it because uh, she's great on Brooklyn Nine Nine. Like mm -hmm. Brian, you actually probably would like Brooklyn Nine Nine. If you actually I, I I think I would. It's one of those shows that got put in the pile of. I have too many shows. I'm I mean, it's, it's entering its last season. So yeah, maybe I'll just binge it someday. Yeah. Um, okay. Now going into my only, Negative. not even negatives, if you want to call them that. Your, your nitpick. Your nitpick. Yeah. Um, the main thing about it is it it is a two and a half hour movie, which I mean, stage musicals are long. It's fine, but it it felt like it could have and probably should have been a two hour movie, because there are songs, especially the Abuela song you're talking about, uh, and maybe one or two others that I felt. While they're beautiful songs, they could have been cut out. You know, make them like it, put them in the extended version you come out with later on. <laughs> it's just in a movie, in a movie like this that already felt like it was because this movie I thought was going great about the hour and a half mark or so. It was the first time I started going, okay, it's seems like it's kind of dragging a little bit here, but then I mean it picks up. But then by the time you hit the two hour mark, it's I think it's the Carnival it's Del Barrio song. I it feels like finale. Yeah. Huh? I loved Carnival. Oh, I, I loved it. I loved it, but it felt like it that's the kind of the finale. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, they have some storylines they need to wrap up and stuff. 
Um, but then it's like, it kind of dragged out the ending for like another half hour and you're like, okay. And again, I loved all the songs. I loved the performance. The scenes even after that were fine. It just felt like the movie like took its time ending. But it, like I said, that's that's a nitpick because I still love the entire movie. Yeah, I mean, that's that's probably the one thing is I, 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 I was telling you before this is like, I didn't know how long it was going into it because I didn't want to like have a clock in my brain of how oh mm-hmm. there's only thirty minutes left so something's gotta happen or well you know this it was one of those things where I think right at the two hour mark I was like all right how much actually is left of this and I was like oh there's still twenty minutes and I was like okay if I'm actually checking my clock right now it means that I'm kind of not that I'm getting over it but it's like I'm starting to go how much more we got mm-hmm. um, and yeah I would say I I don't I don't hate anything that I was watching like I said we're talking about the the Abuela song as probably being the weakest. And it's not that it's a bad song. It's not. It's, it's a great oh, it's song. It's not even a weak song. It's just the song that didn't wasn't necessary. For the yeah, because it just kind of – I don't want to say it, it completely halted the movie because that's not the case because obviously the actions of what happens does lead through the rest of the film. But to me, it felt like the movie stopped right there to do this performance. I agree. Um, and it was also – and it was mainly because – I, I think it's more of like a tip to the hat to her because she was on the Broadway and they wanted to give her her big moment. I'm, and I'm sure she probably sang that on Broadway as well, but it was just, I don't know. That was Honestly, really, I wouldn't be surprised if you see her nominated for a supporting actress. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Anthony Ramos nominated by the end. Oh, I would love to see this whole cast. Um, nominated. Oh yeah. I mean, I, like I said, we love this cast. We love everything. If we have to think of a nitpick, it's just because it was a little bit too long. Uh, and that was probably the one song, if not little ones here and there that they probably could have just transitioned a little bit differently mm-hmm. to other things. Um, but I mean, overall thoughts, uh, I'll go, I'll go my first and I'll let Brian go. Cause I know this like, this like, this is his movie. Um, for me, I kind of already said a little bit ago, this currently right now, my number one film of the year, hands down. Um, and I'm happy that it's my number one, my current number one. I was, I was telling Brian, I think last week I was like, man, I was like, I really hope something comes out that knocks my number one off the number one spot. It's like, I love my movie. That's number one right now. But it's like, I really don't want that to be my number one film of the year. And I was like, and you're like, you're like, in the Heights comes out next week. I was like, yeah. I was like, I probably will. That probably won't be my number one though. I'll like it probably, but I was like, I don't know if it'll be. I'm happy to say that in in the Heights is the best film of the year so far. But like Brian, I said, this is probably gonna stay in the top five uh, for the rest of the year for both of us. And I'm happy. I'm happy that it is. And now I have another movie because like whenever I'm feeling really really down, it's like, you know what? I need a movie that's gonna cheer me up. Normally, I would have gone down the route of a comedy or something like that. But lately, it's been going back and watching Singing in the Rain or an American in Paris, mostly singing in the rain, or I'll just do like a double feature and I pack them together. Now I've got another one within the Heights. Uh, I feel like this is, a, this is a good movie that I could always go back and rewatch and just feel good again. So going to my overall score, uh, I'm going to give in the Heights a 94%, which is obviously an A score. Um, highest rating of the year so far. Uh, could not recommend this enough. Brian says, definitely go check it out in theaters. You don't necessarily have to go see it in IMAX. But if you got a good a good screen theater, definitely go check it out in theaters. I saw it on HBO Max in 4K. It's definitely worth seeing on HBO Max as well. Go see it in both because let's put it this way. After you see it once, you're probably going to want to see it again. Uh, that's my overall thoughts of it. Going to go to Brian now with his overall thoughts. For in the well, you should also, when you go see it in the theaters or on HBO Max, you should watch to the end, unlike Sean. Um. You didn't <laughs> warn me. I even told you, hey, I'm watching it now. And you should have said, Make sure you watch it to the end. I thought you were. Because now, now, as soon as we get done with this, I have to go I have to go see what the end You have to. And yeah. honestly, I've, so I've watched the movie twice through completely. And I, and I honestly, I've gone through and watched a couple of the songs, like, again, just a, a third time. The, the opening one, you know, You Ain't Got No Skills, especially that whole section. And then uh, 96,000. I watched those two songs a third time because I, I love them. Mm. Um, yeah, overall thoughts, I've kind of already covered it. Um, this, this was my most anticipated movie of the year, and it didn't disappoint me at all. Um, like I said, Eva, I was looking for things to try and criticize about it. Couldn't really come up with much there. Uh, it'll be top five by the end of the year. Uh, yeah, I mean, Sean kind of covered kind of covered it. It's 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 just a feel good movie, and I'm actually kind of surprised, pleasantly surprised, that so many other people are so surprised about that in their in their reviews. I mean, reviews going, "Wow, I like this so much more than I thought I would." I'm like. Why didn't you have faith in this movie? But uh, I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm glad. I'm surprised. I'm glad people that might not have otherwise looked at it are now because a lot of people, because they're hearing these reviews, reviews are thinking, well, maybe I should check that out after all if they weren't going to. And I'm glad because this deserves to be seen by everybody. I'm all. If anything, I'm only disappointed that 
it did go on HBO Max as well because you know it won't make the big box office that it could have made. That's very very true. It's very true. Well, um, we'll as far as score, yeah. um, I, I I don't really do like a percentage score. I, I give this uh, four out of five stars, or I guess it translates to a nine out of ten. Well, it's probably more. It's probably close to like a ninety four because it's it's more than a nine, but not quite a ten. Uh, although this is one of those movies that I could rewatch it a couple times and decide, you know what, I'm going to bump it up to five stars. I could totally see that happening. Um, but as of right now, yeah, it's four out of five, four point five out of five for me. Gotcha. Anything else you want to add before we uh, end this? Uh, no, not unless you want to do that singing for us. No, I'm good. I'm good. You, I don't get paid enough to uh, perform for you guys. Um, I'll, I'll do it through. Dance, monkey, dance. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway we guys we, we hope you guys enjoyed this review if you guys did go ahead hit that like share and subscribe button to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos that pop up on the movie crusaders and of course don't forget to follow us on all the social media outlets you see below uh coming up next next friday it's friday you know what that means it's brian and myself again weekend crusaders as we go over five more movies that come out during that weekend in movie history uh we love doing that show we hope you guys enjoy doing you know watching us do that show uh, we love to have fun, and um, we had a lot of laughs on um, this past week's episode, so we hope you guys check that out. Uh, what is the next big movie that comes out? It's not Fast 9, is it? Uh, Fast 9 is the 25th. Is there anything before that? I'm, I'm looking real quick. I have I had them all written down. Um, America, the motion picture, <laughs> uh, and Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. That's what comes out next week. Hitman's Which Wife. I actually watched last night as well. Oh, you actually yeah. I saw oh, it in the, there's a sneak peek. So you I saw it in the heights in the afternoon, and then saw it went back late in the evening and watched uh, *Hitman's Watch Bodyguard*. There's actually there was a screen last night, and the, at most theaters, like a lot of AMC's, think they have one tonight and tomorrow night as well at like 7 p.m. So. I, yeah, I don't have an AMC near me, so I'm not gonna be able to see it. And I, I'm not gonna ask you what you thought of it because I don't know if the uh, the uh, what do you call it when you can't say anything about it. Oh, oh this wasn't that kind of screen. This is a public screen. Oh, was it a public? Okay, what were your thoughts of it, real quick? Um. Yeah, it's all right. I, I, I didn't think it was as good as the first one. It, it actually felt kind of average. Like but, an unnecessary I, but, sequel? Yeah, but I mean, but it's, it's it, it, even the story is kind of like, eh, it's okay, but it's like, you know, Ryan and Ryan and Sam and Sam, it's elevated it, you know, still made it tons of fun. And actually, who was having the most fun this movie was Salma Hyde. She was having a blast. So. I love I love that we went through this whole review perfect, and then as soon as I ask him about Hitman Wise Bodyguard, his internet goes to shit, and he goes all robot voiced. Did I? It is on my. It is on my end. Maybe when I go through the playback thing, it'll be perfectly fine. Which it is. Yeah, if part. nothing else, cut it out. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Uh, but anyway, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this review. We'll be back next week for the Week of Crusaders, and uh, also I'll probably have my review for the Hitman West Bodyguard, uh, and maybe America the Motion Picture. Uh, I know. I know Brian's real excited for that film. I'm kind of. You know, we'll see what happens with it. Uh, but yes, until next time. In case we don't see you, good morning, good afternoon, and good night for the Crusaders. You're still here? It's over. Go home. <laughs>